Um, Eli, could you just actually just uh, introduce yourself, say a few words, and then sure. go ahead. Yeah. Uh, my name's Eli Purchase, and I'm running for the Green Party here in the Western Arctic. We've got a pretty exciting campaign lined up that I think people are going to like, so... Okay, just a sec now. Yeah, that sounds good. That, that level's really good, okay. Okay, um, so, Eli, first of all, um, last campaign, last election rather, I know that Sam Gamble, I think it was about 7% of the vote did he get? Yeah, something like something that. Something like yeah. that, okay. That was a really big increase on previous Green Party candidates and something mm -hmm. he was really proud of to be able to uh, kind of get that Green Party message across. Mm -hmm. And I think it's something that Northerners really respond to. Why, why should NWT residents vote Green? Well, the Green Party, as soon as you say it, people can automatically just think, well, environmental topics and things like that. But the real beauty behind the Green Party platform is it's so broad and so encompassing. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that one of the tenets of the Green Party is fiscal responsibility. You know, the Green Party is actually a fiscally conservative party. We manage the money. Uh, there's a lot of progressive social elements as that's part of the the Vision Green document that the Green Party has released. But, you know, we're not going to introduce a whole bunch of broad social programs if we can't pay for them. So fiscal responsibility. And I really think that the people of the Northwest Territories are a really progressive people. We see the effects of climate change firsthand. We're the ones who are encountering those drastic changes right off the bat. And we live really close to nature. Where else in Canada can you drive 20 minutes outside of town and be in the middle of nowhere? Like, it's one of the most beautiful and amazing places in Canada. And I think that the people up here really realize that, you know, we've got to protect this if we want this to last for future generations and for our kids and, and that kind of thing. So I think that's, that's one of the really big appeals for people for the, the Green Party platform. I'm wondering, I mean... <laughs> The Green Party did come closer than ever before in the last election, but still there was no seat in Parliament. No, unfortunately. This year, I, I think we're going to make a breakthrough this year. Elizabeth May, she's doing some polling in her riding, and according to her polls, she's actually really close to the Conservative candidate, Gary Lund. So I, I think quite possibly you could see one, two, maybe four or five candidates. So do you think she'll get in this time? I, I think she's got a really great chance of getting in. So, And, you know, you just need that one or two seats to really make that breakthrough where people start taking a second look at it, you know? so. Is your success here in the NWT directly related to Elizabeth May's success on her campaign route? Well, one of the major tenets of the Green Party is that MPs are responsible to their constituents first and the party second. So that allows candidates in their individual ridings to kind of tailor what they're running on to the needs of their respective riding. So I think that's actually one of the key things for, for the success of, of the Green Party in the last election and what's going to be a key for success in, in the coming election here is just that, you know what, we look at what our constituents want and what our constituents need and how they want us to represent them in Ottawa and go from that. We're not kind of beholden to that party line where we have to follow exactly what the leader says and that kind of thing. Okay, so the thing about the NWT is that you mentioned that you believe people here are progressive. That might be the case in, in many ways at the same time. There are a lot of people he here who are really big on resource development. I still got a yep. level going. Yep, we're good. Um, you know, resource development. They want to streamline the regulatory system. They they want more. Oh, for from sure. From what I've heard, lots for, of for projects sure. and stuff like that. One, the resource and they, development. They see, they see certain things as standing in their way. Yes. They even see the wildlife act as standing in their way. Well, you can't please everybody all the time. And you're right, resource development is one of the, the really, really important things for the Northwest Territories. That's one of the huge generators for, for the economy. 
Sorry, Sarah. Yeah. You're good? Yeah, no, I'm good. But my All question right. for you, though, is sure. as, a, as the Green Party, as the Green Party candidate, what are you going to say to those people? What are the green ideas for allowing some of this development to go forward in a greener way? Well, that's actually something that I'm really interested in pursuing. I'm interested in talking to business and I'm interested in talking to the minds to see exactly what their concerns are and see how maybe that can be addressed within a greener type of initiative. One major thing with the Green Party is this idea of you have you can't just look at the economic cost of something you also have to consider the social cost and the environmental cost because something might look like a great initial deal where you end up having to pay a couple extra million dollars down the road because you didn't take spend that hundred thousand off the bat so it's you can't just look at something from an, from an economic perspective and in terms of you know streamlining regulations and things like that we actually have one of the strongest uh, regulatory uh, frameworks in Canada here in the Northwest Territories and I think it's because we realize that you know these this is our land we have to administer it in a, a way that is not only economically feasible but environmentally and socially feasible and we also have to respect the choice of the people who live here any decisions that are made has to have the support of the people of the Northwest Territories first and not necessarily business but again it's not a black and white issue it's it's something where people can work together you can find ways to make things work and just because I'm part of the Green Party it doesn't mean that I'm just gonna be anti-mine or anti-industry it's it's something where we have to work together see where people are coming from and and go from there well, so I guess that's what I'm wondering is, and I, I know you're not anti this or that, but, but does the Green Party have any ideas to actually, concrete ideas to show some of the mining companies to say, look, we've got this idea that, you know, will you consider looking at this in the next few years? Um, we all know that they, the diamond mines, were planning on, on signing up for the Tots and Hydro expansion project because mm -hmm. they're interested in you know, tapping into greener energy. Oh, for sure. So, I, you know, I think some people might want to hear some concrete ideas. And, and that's where green energy and green initiative funding, I believe the federal government has to take a, a key role in that, to be putting that funding forward to the experts who can come up with these ideas. There's plenty of people out there who have great ideas for how mining can be done in an environmentally and socially and economically responsible manner or how po different new ways of generating power and the thing is we need to be funding that research and funding those initiatives so that we have those options for industry to pursue mm -hmm. and the more research that gets done and the more these initiatives are funded and are used as they use more and more, the, the cost of those is going to go down and it'll become more viable. Mm -hmm. What is that funding like currently? Uh, I think if you look at most of the major party platforms, they'll agree that green funding is nowhere near what it should be. And part of that is, you know, there's all kinds of uh, subsidies for the, the oil industry and, and that kind of thing that I just saw Jack Layton proposed today that those be cut and put into more green initiatives that I, I spent a bit of time in Ontario they're working really hard to get uh, wind turbines up and running uh, so there's all kinds of different energy generation projects out there there's there's tons of stuff out there that we can tap into in order to to provide industry with those options Okay, uh, then tell me a little bit about your campaign then. You said you've got lots of interesting things going on. Oh right? yeah, well, <laughs> first off, um, I think one of the major, major things is the one issue that I've already talked about is this idea of people being responsible to their, the MPs being responsible to their constituents. It just seems more and more these days that the representatives that we send to Ottawa stick to their party lines and not a lot gets done and a prime example of that is with the budget I don't know about you but when I'm trying to get a contract figured out or when I'm trying to get an agreement in place I 
work my tail off. I am sitting there wee hours of the night, setting up meetings, sitting outside of people's doors to try and get things done. And quite honestly, that's not what I saw from the representatives in Ottawa. Um, I believe that MPs should be coming together to work to do the job that we send them to Ottawa to do. I know as an MP, I would be approaching different other northern and rural MPs who have the same type of problems that or issues that we have here in the Northwest Territories. We need infrastructure funding. We need highways paved and built. We need hydroelectric projects. We need airports renovated. We need clean drinking water in our communities. And I can tell you that there are other ridings across Canada, Nunavut, the Yukon, Wood Buffalo in northern Alberta, lots of northern Ontario ridings, northern Saskatchewan, northern Manitoba, northern BC. There are a lot of ridings out there who have the same types of issues that need that specific, unique northern rural response. And I think that if you get 50 to 100 of those MPs together saying, hey, we need this infrastructure funding, then that's a lot stronger voice than just one individual MP here or one individual MP there. Regardless of party lines. No, exactly. Yeah. People, the MPs are sent to Ottawa to work together, contribute and be responsible to the needs of their constituents. And whether you're Conservative, whether you're NDP, whether you're Liberal, whether you're Green, whether you're Bloc Quebecois, there are common interests that we all share, that we all need to work together to accomplish. How, why do you think you can actually, you're sounding like, uh, I like a couple minutes. Sure. It sounds as though you're advocating a spirit of cooperation that's not currently really there. How do you think you can manage that? Well, that's one of the beauties of that uh, topic that I brought up already with the Green Party. It's right in their, their policies that the MPs are responsible to their constituents first, party second. And that's something that I firmly believe in, that perhaps some of the issues that we see up here in the Northwest Territories don't line up exactly with what the Green Party believes is correct or whatnot. But, say in the case of sustainable hunting, I know the, there's a... Uh, the mayor of Iqaluit is, is bringing up a lot of issues with the Green Party stance on, say, the seal hunt or, or things like that. In, in terms of sustainable hunting, that is one of the critical ways for people to get food in the Northwest Territories. And that's not something that I'm going to run against. Like, yes, I'm a Green Party member. I'm running as the Green MP. But in that instance, I go with my constituents. And as a Green Party member, I'm young, I'm energetic and I'm not beholden to those traditional this is what the Liberal Party expects from their MPs, this is what the Conservative Party expects from them and their MPs. We've got an exciting set of ideas for how we want to go forward and I think that the people of the Northwest Territories are going to like it. One more question. Sure. You, you are up against um, a couple of contenders anyway that have either had a lot of political experience have been the incumbent or, you know, others who have political experience. So, what honestly, what do you think your chances are of winning the seat? Well, I'm going to take the seat. There's no question about that. <laughs> I, I don't have all that political savvy. I don't have that, all those years of experience sitting in the, the, their respective chambers, going through the protocol and that kind of thing. I would be happy to increase the votership, the voter turnout for Greens. Uh, I believe that in this election particularly, people are going to be able to vote how they feel. Um, I don't think we're going to have to worry about strategic voting and, oh no, should we vote this way to prevent this from happening or whatnot. I think that's that in this election, especially here in the Northwest Territories, that people will be able to vote how they want to vote. And, you know, the most important thing for me is getting those issues out there, getting the other parties to consider them, and see if we can change some minds on some, some key topics. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks a lot for your time. Thank you. Sorry, I have to run. Yeah.